Hello, my name is Cal Moliné from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. In this video, I want to attempt to answer the question, what if I work for the state? You know, as an anarchist or someone who's new to uh, anarchism, you know, and they find themselves in the, in the position, in the vocation of working for the state, for government, or um, contracting for government, you know, I have to understand that, the, that anarchism is not about quitting your job. You know, anarchism really is about first letting go of the idea that violence was set us free. You know, let go of the idea that voting was set us free. Let go of the idea that politics was set us free. Let go of the idea that, that your political rulers or politicians have any vested interest in actually giving you real freedom in your lifetime. You know, from there, you can find a myriad of different different directions you can take you know, to, to help spread anarchism in your own life. You know, that's where change begins. You know, to know thyself, to do the self-philosophy, to do the self-examination, to better understand yourself, to know, uh, I guess, why why you do the things you do, why you respond the way you do, um, to trace that back to, to find the, the roots of, of, I guess, the the your internal struggles that you you find yourself in in, in this life. Um, and from, from there, that's where anarchy begins. It begins with you. It begins, again, with change, with, with the person, with the individual, you know, before you start um, going out there with your interpersonal relationship and trying to spread this philosophy to, to your community. You know, you can't be, you can't go out there and spread philosophy, you yourself don't feel that you're in a good place, you know, financially, uh, emotionally, physically, uh, all, all of this is very important, you know, if you go out there and talk about philosophy and spread, spreading anarchism, then people can see in your face that you're very stressed out, you're very, uh, you have this anxiety, you know, that's, that's something people are going to shy away from, that's something that people are going to associate anarchism with, and people will kind of pull back away from that, because, you know, that's, you're, you're tying that in with the message of the product that you're trying to uh, tailor to, to your audience, tailor to the people you're trying to spread this message to. So again, with anarchism, it begins with yourself. You know, let go first of the idea that violence was set you free, and then start working internally, start working with yourself. Um, and from there, you know, if you're a parent, uh, adopt peaceful parenting. You know, there's, we have a lot of information here at Liberty RVA, we put together a really good peaceful parenting pamphlet. You know, if, you're, if you don't have kids, you have to understand that. Uh, that for the most part, even if you don't have children, you know, I'm sure you would have friends who have children, or, or aunts, or uncles, or family members who do have children. You know, it's, uh, and I, I'm very certain that uh, one day those those children, when they grow up, when they finally have age, you know, they would have appreciated your involvement um, in their lives and, and trying to, I would say, save their lives and preventing this um, violent parenting that continues to go on. It's been going on for generations. So you know, we have a peaceful parenting pamphlet. The pamphlets are really. Uh, designed to help uh, encourage your communication skills. You know, that's uh, to kind of bring this digital activism that I found all over the internet and actually bring that to real life, to actually bring that into your community. And the best way to start that is to start practicing. Um, you know, when you go out there, when you start talking to people, it's not about uh, trying to convince anyone right away. It's, it it's really has to do with being able to, to exercise your, your voice, being able to exercise your words, being able to exercise how to communicate this philosophy to other people and not to take it to heart, not to take it, um, not to feel let down if no one understands because for the most part in the beginning, it, it is going to be difficult, but you'll find that uh, if you just examine those opportunities, when you examine those experiences, you can take out the areas where it didn't work and see what areas where you can improve upon that. Uh, you know, because I'll be honest, uh, armchair philosophy is not going to set you free. Armchair activism is not going to be enough to end the state. You know, if you're not going to actually get up and actually go out there in your community and, and engage, um, not just with your friends or with your family, but in the area that you live in, you know, it's, it's going to be put off for the next generation for them to, to look back at us, you know, and we'll be the ones to be shamed for, for not have done anything when we could have. And this is not something I want, this is not a burden I would want to put onto my children. You know, in the day that I do have my own children. You know, this is my generation, this is my time, this is my year, my hour, my, my very moment to actually make a real difference. And that's, that's, that's what really it's going to take, you know, to start reaching out to one another, to start practicing our communication skills, to start talking again to one another, to, to start using our real voice. And then from there, you know, there's, there's a myriad of different areas that you can, of course, you can, you can practice whatever your skill are, whatever your um, talents are, you know, work in that, in that area of field, of course, you know, I'm not saying everyone has to be a perfect communicator, but, you know, this is, this begins again with, from the extension from yourself, with your interpersonal relationships, you know, begins after that with your friends, 
with your family, you know, within your own social circle. And I'll be putting the uh, links to the uh, volunteers and pamphlet on this video as well. That you can download, it prints really good in black and white. Um, I'll put a, a website, I found a website that has, um, it'll print you 500 copies for, for less than $50. And that's, that's what we've been using for to printing these, uh, these pamphlets out. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, anarchism is not about quitting your job. You know, that's, that's the last thing. You know, first, do, do, the, do the actual work that's needed, you know, for, for yourself. Do the actual work that's needed to, to let go of this cultural, um, bogged down experience that you've been born into and, and shed yourself of, of that. You know, there's, there's a lot of, it's not, it's not easy. It's not as a, a point of a click that is going to make it all disappear, you know? Um, and I guess going back to the activism thing again is, you know, if all we do is uh, read or write books and make or watch videos, nothing's ever going to change. You know, if you don't actually take in all this information that's been lying around for decades, and for me, it's been lying around for decades. For me, uh, all this information of libertarianism, all this information about uh, the non-aggression principle, it uh, has done nothing to bring me closer to freedom. And in my past year, talking close to over 200 people, I met maybe a good four people who, who understand, uh, who understood this philosophy, uh, who are somewhat familiar with this. And that's about it. That's the extent that this information has done to have any, any impact in, in the city that I live here in Richmond. And so yeah, you're gonna have to do the actual real work. You're gonna have to actually get out there and start talking to people. You're gonna have to actually begin with your friends and begin with your parents. Um, maybe in future videos I'll, I'll start um, trying to help with, with tips and strategies and ways, other ways to introduce this to your friends and to your family. But that's, that's where it starts. That's where this change really begins. Um, you know, and that circle jerking around on the internet, you know, getting praises from everyone who already are anarchists. You know, you didn't start off as an anarchist to begin with. You know, I think a lot of people become uh, cynical about even trying to communicate this to a lot of people, and they've they've internalized that into this this bitter hatred nested towards towards their, their community, towards the people out there. You know, um, you know, I used to wear status too, but the way that it's vehemently used, you know, no one is really a status until you've actually done a good job introducing uh, this philosophy to them. So they can understand the difference. They can understand where they actually are standing, on which side of the line, you know, for slavery or for freedom. You know, there's no middle ground. So, again, there's there's a lot of different ways to to begin um, your activism for anarchism. You know, anarchism is not a, a laid back position. You know, a um, an abolitionist that that does nothing, and then towards helping uh, his, his brothers and sisters in his community towards achieving freedom. It's not an abolitionist. So you have to understand that the same thing anarchist falls in the same line, the same thing as voluntarist and falls in the same line. You know, we have to actually get out there. We have to actually stand up. We actually have to reach out, support one another, reach out to one another, talk to one another. And then from there, when, uh, when you're ready, on your own recognizance, because the government's not going to be there in the end. You know, you look at Detroit, you look at the unsustainability, you know, if you're very familiar with free markets, you're very familiar with Austrian economics. The inevitability of, of all these cities going bankrupt is, is inevitable. There's, there's a couple of them already falling for bankrupt and in Cal the state of California alone. You know, this, uh, the dollar's already lost over 95, 97% of its value. You know, it's inevitable. You know, so what to do for yourself as an individual to start looking outside of that job and that position and start looking towards um, creating your own business if you can you know that I find that to be the most liberating way the most um, I guess true freedom I guess comes comes from that to be your own boss you know to set your own hours to to create your own productivity that you want to create the the, the happiness that you want to to achieve and bring in for yourself and to start looking in those areas. But if that takes a year, if that takes two, three, five years, that's, that's entirely up to you to decide. That's entirely up to you to, to figure out. That's, that's your road. That's your path. Now, however long that takes, that's, uh, again, that's on your own recognizance to, to figure that out. No one can tell you otherwise. But again, you have to start somewhere and it begins first with letting go of the idea that violence will set us free. And with that, I'm hopefully uh, not too brazen with a lot of these, um, I guess my position, but 
Uh, yeah, remember, anarchy is not a place or a destination. It's a way of life. And with that, I want to go spread some anarchy by myself. Take care. I'll see you at the victory party. They don't allow a freedom of competition to say, you know what, 
this is an abuse and a harmful service that you're forcing me to pay for and you're forcing this on me, I'm not allowed to cancel my payment as I would like with Netflix or unsubscribe or go with Hulu, right? And that's that's the first step to see the immorality of government and to start reaching out to actually use a real voice to one another. And you'll find that we share these fundamental values with one another before against this violence. And, and from there, that's where we start that dialogue. Yeah, that's a pretty good message. What's your name? Cal. Cal. That's me. I'm Travis. Travis. Pleasure to meet you, Travis. I'm Carmen. Carmen. Pleasure to meet you, Carmen. Um, where do you guys meet up? Uh, pretty much gonna... everywhere. We do like monthly freedom gatherings. Uh, I'm, I do, sometimes I'm at the Compass at uh, a VCU. Um, pretty much picking different places around Richmond to kind of spread a lot of this philosophy out there. Uh, so uh, we have a website. I was about to ask you yeah, on Twitter yeah. or social media or what you guys are. Uh, Liberate RVA. Liberate okay. our community from the idea that violence is set us free. You know, not just state violence, but the violence between each other and also the violence is done to children. Uh, spanking, for example, it teaches children that violence is a way to solve problems in this world. You know, so it's, it's pretty much universal idea. You know, with not, not enough preferences. We can have our communities of preferences. We can have, you know, an apartment building that's 420 friendly and the other across the street that's not. You know? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Alright, cool. Oh, no, Alright, that's great. I have pamphlets you guys uh, will like. Oh, sure. Uh, there's a lot of information on here as well. I guess there's also an address to our, our website on, on there okay. as well. Right. So we meet monthly, and I guess a lot of friends of us kind of share a lot. Well, I guess today is bacon and philosophy. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great combination. Yeah. <laughs> it was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very good for us. Thank you. to use violence to solve personal problems. No. No. And then with the exception of self-defense, of yourself and other people, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? No. Um, I mean, would it be wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? I mean, with the exception of self-defense, of yourself and other people, would it be wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Yeah, like, I mean, you'll start it, but I'll end it, right? But yeah, I'm not yeah, going to be yeah. the one to start the fight, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, perfect. So then the third question would be, would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas on other people? To violently force your ideas on top of you. Like if you don't like what I have to say, you can walk away. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if I grab you and threaten you right now, I'm violently forcing my ideas. Yeah. Alright, so you, perfect. You just told me in your day-to-day -day life you have a plurality of non-violent solutions so you apply and use to solve your personal problems. And you have this more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're taught that the only way we can solve any kind of problems is through their government, right? They're voting, as they say, right? Bullshit. Yeah, bull yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the people, the people vote with their ideas and trying to solve problems and in fact they like the politician. That politician, his or only job is to legislate uh, those ideas ideas into laws. But then those laws of ideas are backed and enforced at the, by the police at gunpoint. You know, you could take cannabis, for example. If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison. And when at any point I resist or refuse or don't agree with those ideas or try to escape, I'd be made by more violence or something shot, murdered, right? And that's the hidden violence of government. Government knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of end use of violence to solve the problems. Oh, yeah, yeah, Versus yeah, the plurality yeah. of non-violence uh, non solutions that we already apply and use in our day-to-day -day lives. It's like the boss the man, too. Yeah. And the dude they killed, who was, who was the son, He's the son of the guy who was ready to uh, testify against the big bank for changing the history. Yeah. Uh, up on the witch count, but they limited the all the guns. They, they accused the two guys, the one they killed, but the son of the guy who uh, testified against the big bank for the purpose of wanting to change the history. And now the judge has dropped the case and no one's heard no more, and nobody knows why. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, oh, they, I know. They, they play for the same team on that oh, side. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. I just wanted to hear your view, though. Yeah, that's, I'm that's it. I'm letting know somebody else ain't dumb like, like the rest of us. Well, that's cool, man. That's cool. Oh, can I give you a pamphlet? I mean, like, there are mostly things that, I mean, I've considered a good amount by myself. This is just, uh, I mean, especially with, especially with, uh, drug control and I mean they've been doing a lot of uh, rights trampling lately along with like the AP and whatnot so I mean I feel like most people really are disenchanted with the government already and that like we already understand that our tax paying dollars are going to go towards I mean various programs which we won't agree with so I mean that that is the sad part but I mean I wouldn't say that government in, as a whole is immoral I would say that as of right now there's a lot of things that we should probably fix but um yeah, right now, I guess, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> the drone bombing of children overseas, the tens right. of thousands of people uh, thrown into cages to be dehumanized for victimless crimes. Um, you know, the, the, like last year alone, like corporal punishment in public schools, so there's 200,000 children were, were beaten by public school officials. Yeah, but how would you change that? 
Uh, you change up actually using a, using a real voice. You know, they want to say our voice is a piece of paper, it's a chat, it's a lever that we use every four years, you know, uh, looking for, for parking, waiting in line and go inside that voting booth. But I mean, when we actually use a real voice to start reaching out to one another in our community, we'll find that we share these values, you and I. Now we share these fundamental principles against that violence. And that's, that's where we start to find free market solutions to, to first acknowledge and recognize that the state is, is, uh, has a, is an institution of violence. It's that hidden matrix in, in our society that they have a monopoly on law, they have a monopoly on security, they have a monopoly on, on the roads, on the schools, and we're not allowed to compete. We're not allowed to, to cancel or unsubscribe our payments if it's a harmful piece of service that they force upon us to pay for. Like Netflix last year, they tried to increase their prices overnight, and everyone was like, oh, fuck that, unsubscribe, cancel the payment, they went to Hulu, right? Yeah. Uh, and in the same way, we become in charge. We're the ones uh, we can establish rules, we can have our communities of preferences, we can have an uh, apartment complex that's 420 friendly and one across the street that's not. But how would you actually enforce a popular opinion? Uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, there would be no popular. You would have a, a, a creative communities of preferences. You can have your Amish community. We can have rules without rulers. And that's all politicians are. They're just political rulers. You know, and, and then and they force one preference onto everyone. Either everyone likes marijuana or they don't. And people who don't, regardless if you like it or not, you know, here's a cage for you. You know, they can only enforce one preference. They can only enforce one law. They have a monopoly on laws. Instead of having a plurality of laws. Instead of having uh, like a criminal defense uh, system that we can choose. We can choose our own judges. You know, there are fair and impartial. But with government, we have no choice. With more than we have no choice. So it's pretty much to turn away from the government